everybody welcome back to my channel so in this video I'm going to be going through how I drew this baby portrait using colored pencils and if you guys want to see this in real time and hear me talk through how I drew this and all the colors I used all the techniques I used in real time and follow along with me then I have got all of the real time tutorials available on my patreon now and a link will be in the description so you can check that out but anyway guys let's get into the tutorial so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm starting with the baby's eyes and as you know by now I always like to start with the eyes and so I blocked in first the pupils just use the black to block them in and then I used the brown to block in the other shadowed areas like the upper lash line and now I'm going in with some grey colours to get in the darkest parts of the iris even though the baby's eyes were blue blue eyes tend to have a lot of grey in them not just blue and if you use too much blue it will look too artificial so try to use some greys in there as well so I used a darker grey to go around the outside edge of the iris which was the darkest part of the iris apart from the pupil and then I used a blue colour and a lighter blue to blend that out I like to build it up in layers and then once I've added all my layers I apply more pressure to the final sort of layer so that it all looks really smooth and to get rid of all of that white grain one thing to notice about baby's eyes are that they are quite a lot wider and bigger than adult eyes so that's one thing to notice about baby's portraits when you're doing them is that the eyes are a bit bigger and that's what makes it look really like youthful and like a baby. So now I'm going in and doing the white of the eyes and my main tip for drawing white of the eyes in colour pencil is to add a lot of greys. A lot of people don't apply much grey shading, they just do it quite light whereas in reality there's quite a lot of dark greys in that white of the eyes so make sure you get them in. And now I'm working on the skin around the eyes. And so the skin was a lot of different tones. There was some warm toned areas and some cooler toned areas. So it's really important to use a lot of different colors and to layer them rather than just using one color for the skin. You need to add a variety to make it look realistic because in reality skin doesn't just consist of one or two colours, there's quite a lot of different shades in there and quite a lot of different tones. Um, a few of my main tips for drawing skin is to always have a sharp pencil, always apply really light shading to start with and go in circular motions to try and fill in all of the white grain of the paper. Never apply, apply a lot of pressure until the final stages and just build up a lot of different colours and then once you're happy with the colours then blend it out using a lighter pencil. The two pencils that I like to do my final blending with as you can see me doing now is the Buff Titanium which is more of like an off-white creamy colour and if you have Prisma colours it'll just be like the cream tone just like an off-white colour so that it doesn't just make it really light it still adds a bit of colour to it. And so I use that to shade out and blend the majority of the skin and then for the really highlighted areas like the brightest areas I will use the white pencil to blend that out and burnish that area. So I like to layer the colours using very light layers. Make sure that you're not applying too much pe pressure on the pencil because if you do that means you'll have stubborn pencil strokes that will be very hard to blend out when you do the burnishing. And now I'm going in with the eyebrow. And so baby's eyebrows are very light. They're very sort of sparse. And a lot of the time you can't see a lot of the individual eyebrow hairs. So what I'm doing is I'm blocking in the general direction that the hairs are going in. As you can see, I haven't done really thick eyebrows. There's quite a lot of areas where you can see skin underneath. And I also add layers over the top and lighten them up so that they blend more into the skin and they're not so harsh and just like on top of the skin. I want to make it look like they're blending subtly into the skin. And then I use my crafting knife to pull up some hairs and like I said you can see more of these techniques in real time on my Patreon if you want to because this portrait took me 10 hours so it's going to be going a bit fast. So now onto the other eye and I do the exact same techniques, I'm just layering all of those different colours. When the skin is more cool toned I like to use the more pink tone shades of skin colours like in this case I was using like the burnt siennas. If it's more orange toned I like to use the burnt ochres and if it's more like yellow toned I like to use the brown ochres. If the skin's got a bit of green to it then I think the raw embers are really good for that but what I really recommend doing is do a little colour swatch of all of the colours that you think you might be using and then just get your reference photo and compare your colour swatch to the reference photo and just pick the colours that closest match that reference photo. 
So like I said, building up those colours and I'm blending it with the buff titanium and the white pencil. One thing that is going to make a uh, baby's portrait really, really realistic is to make sure that you're getting that really smooth skin. Babies have extremely smooth skin, so you need to make sure that you're doing really soft shading and really nice smooth blending. Otherwise, the skin won't look right. It's really, really smooth. So make sure you're really concentrating on applying the pencil without any pressure, just really lightly layer and really practice that smooth shading before you try and attempt to do a baby portrait because if you have too much texture in the skin it just won't look right. Most of the time you can get away with it if you're doing like an adult portrait but with a baby's portrait the skin is so smooth that you can't really get away with it being too rough looking. So another thing that I quickly want to mention about baby's eyes before I move on to the nose is that when you're drawing the eyelashes make sure that you don't use lots of black because their eyelashes are really light and so I like to use a brown colour rather than using black to do the eyelashes otherwise they won't look right because they'll be too dark and it will look like they're wearing makeup. But anyway guys, let's get on to the nose. So the first thing that I did was I got in the nostrils which are the darkest part of a nose and in most cases they are going to be the darkest part of a nose. And so I used the brown tones and some burnt siennas to get those nostrils in and now I'm lightly layering all of the different tones for the nose. What's really important is to make sure that you haven't got lots of really harsh outlines around the nose because with a baby's portrait, like I said, their skin is really soft and that means the transitions between the different features is going to be really soft as well. So try not to outline the nose really harshly. Really look at your reference photo. Look at how the different areas transition into each other. Like, for example, the sides of the nose, they very subtly transition into the rest of the skin. So so try not to make it a really harsh outline, really focus on getting those subtle changes and looking at the really subtle changes in colour. So for this the nose was quite light so I laid a lot of those similar colours and I used the same skin colours that I did for the skin around the eyes. And that's really important, you don't want to do all the different areas and their skin to all look completely different shades. You need to use the same sort of colours that you did for the skin for the eyes. So that it all kind of gels together when you mix the different areas together, it will all look seamless and you won't be able to tell where you sort of did the different skin parts in the different sessions of drawing that you did. So like I said, now I'm going in and I'm blending it out with the buff titanium for the slightly just normal areas and then the white for the highlighted areas. And when I'm blending, I use my pencil in the opposite direction than I laid the initial pencil layers down. And this is so that you're going in the opposite direction to the initial pencil strokes. And this means that you're blending out the pencil strokes and it means that you're getting this really smooth look because you're going against the pencil strokes that you initially added and to counter them so that you're kind of smudging them out and blending them out so you can't see them any longer. So now once I blend it out, you will notice that certain areas might have gone a bit too light. So what I do once I blend everything out for the first time is I look at the reference photo and I look at my drawing and I just glaze other colours over the top to make sure that the areas that are the most shadowed are dark enough and I just like to adjust the colours so that they are really accurate to the reference photo. You don't necessarily have to get the colours that you're using for the baby's skin exactly the same as the baby's reference photo. What's really important is that you're getting your shadows and your highlights in the correct place. Obviously you want your skin tone to be similar, so look to see if it's cool toned, warm toned and the sort of under base colour of the skin. But what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be exactly the same shade to look realistic. Because if you think about it, if you were to put like the reference photo and do like some editing on it, you know, maybe add a filter or slightly change stuff, that can change the colour of the skin slightly and it would still look like that baby and realistic. So you can to some extent use different skin tones than the reference photo, slightly different colours and it will look fine, it will look really good and you won't be able to tell a difference. So Focus on getting the contrast, so the shadows and the highlights and the values correct, rather than worrying about getting the exact sort of skin colours exactly the same, because chances are it's going to be very hard to match the exact skin tone. 
So now let's move on to the mouth and the first thing that I did was I went in with the black and I used that to block in those really dark shadows inside the mouth which were just like pure black and then I went in with like the brown to create some more of the shadows on the tongue because I didn't want that to be just black otherwise it would look a bit flat and when you blend it out it would just be a bit grey and then I used some of the burnt sienna to go over the whole thing and then I lifted the highlights with anthraquinoid pink which is just like a pink colour and also the white as well and now I'm going on to the lips and I added a base color of just this light pink and now I added the shadows with the burnt sienna 50% so it's really important with the baby's lips to get that smooth look but also to get the shadows and the highlights in the correct place there won't be an awful lot of texture in the baby's lips there won't be a lot of like cracks and too many creases in texture so it's quite smooth looking which is quite simple to do rather than having to add lots of detail so just focus on getting the base tone down on the lips and then looking for a highlighted shade and a shadowed shade and just use those different shades to block in where the shadows are and get in where the highlights are there were still some creases to the lips but not very many not like say an adult's lips would be so try to keep it nice and smooth otherwise again it won't look right the whole thing with a baby's portrait is everything is very smooth and very subtly kind of graduated and transitioning into each area so make sure that you get that in especially with a baby's portrait and you can't get away with texture like you can with other types of portraits everything has got to be really smooth so again once I've got the basics in I go in and tweak different things get the colors as accurate as I possibly can there was some red tones so I like to use the color russet to add a bit more of a saturated look to it and it's really important to glaze different colors you might have every color in and it looks fine but it might be a bit dull so you can just make it a bit more vibrant by adding some of these like anthraquinoid pink or russet colors so like some more saturated colors that you wouldn't necessarily use a lot of but just a little touch here and there really brings it to life and makes it have that healthy looking glow and so now I'm moving on to the skin and the skin is so important to making a baby's portrait because like I keep saying it needs to be really smooth so the first thing that I do is I go in with the shadowed colors like the under base colors and I just shade them vertically down to get in some of the basic shadows there isn't too many shadows in a baby's portrait well in this one anyway so I just shaded them in I shaded the other base tone colors in which was like the burnt sienna 10 cent and burnt ochre 10 cent and now I'm going in with the buff titanium and you can see I'm blending that in circular motions and this gets a really, really smooth look. One of the problems that a lot of people have is that they will blend out for the first time and then they'll try and add lots more layers, but it, all, it will all kind of just like come up and you'll get that really waxy look and you'll it'll start to clump up a bit and it won't look smooth anymore so what I recommend is once you blend out with that first layer with the burnishing if you want to glaze and add more colors over the top I really recommend using the side of the pencil because using the side of the pencil is really going to restrict the amount of pressure that you're like putting onto the layers that you've added like if you were to use the point of the pencil you'll be digging in and you're more likely to get that texture and that waxy kind of look build up whereas if you use the side of the pencil and just kind of glaze that color over that layer then you'll be able to maintain that smooth look so it's really important to maintain that smooth look with a baby's portrait so make sure that you're not overworking areas try not to add too many sort of layers try to get all of your colors down and then blend it with those kind of buff titanium and that white and then you won't have to do much else you might have to glaze a few more colors add a few more shadows but you want to have the majority done whilst you've before you've like done that first layer and blended that out you want all of those colors to basically be in the right place you don't want to do too much tweaking after you've burnished it so I'm moving on to the forehead and there was some shadows around that flower headband so I made sure I got them in first and again I always like to block in the shadows first so even if they're just subtle shadows I like to get them in and once I've kind of lightly layered those shadowed colours in and I used a lot of grey for the shadow in this portrait I go in with those base tones 
And these base tones are colours that I use throughout the entire portrait. So the Burnt Sienna Tempestent and Burnt Ochre Tempestent are two colours that I use everywhere in this portrait. And you want to have those base colours to make the portrait look kind of like succinct with each other, so all the skin looks like similar. But obviously your shadowed colours can be slightly different because different areas might have different sort of shadowed colours. But I like to add those base tones all over in exactly the same places to allow it to look kind of coherent with each other. But then I don't layer as much of those base colours on the lightest areas. I leave them quite sort of clear of any pencil. I add a tiny bit but I leave them quite clear so that when I blend everything out with my buff titanium and the white pencil, those highlighted areas still look lighter than the rest of the skin. So once I've completed doing the forehead, I need to make sure that it blends nicely in with the nose and the top of the nose. So I just made sure that I added some white down to the nose to blend those two areas together. So now let's work on the body. And again, same process, going in with those shadowed colors, I generally use the sepia, which is a brown tone, and the raw umbers to get in the shadows because the skin has that sort of greenish undertone to it and grey undertone, so I like switch between the raw umbers and the French greys, which is like a warm grey if you're using like Prismacolors or Polychromos. And again, once I've added in those base shadow colours, I then went in with the base tones, so that burnt ochre tempestent, burnt sienna tempestent, adding that everywhere. You can see that it looks quite messy, but the key is I've not pressed too hard on the pencil, so even if it looks messy, I can blend all this out really smoothly by going in the opposite direction than I've done the pencil strokes. And you can see that I've left certain areas quite free of any coloured pencil, so that when I'm blending with this buff titanium, you'll see that these areas that I haven't applied much pencil to look highlighted they look like the lightest areas so you've got that natural highlight without having to press really hard on your white pencil to try and lighten it up again most of the time you don't want to get the skin too dark in the highlighted areas you want to try and keep it as light as possible so you don't have to really work hard to brighten it up again and risk damaging the paper by adding too much force onto it and pulling up too much of that colored pencil so now I'm trying to blend the body in with the neck by adding that sort of jawline area. And again, that was a very subtle change in colour. It wasn't a sharp jawline, it was just a very subtle shadow to give that look of the jawline. So again, I just added more of a thicker version, a thicker sort of layer of that Burnt Ochre Tempestent and Burnt Sienna Tempestent. So now let's move on to the ear and ear is something that I find quite tricky because of all of the little parts you've got to make it look realistic and focus on so many little shadows and highlights but again I focused on the same method I added in the base tones and the shadows using that again burnt sienna tempestent burnt ochre tempestent I use these two colors because there was cool toned areas which were more pinkish and warm toned areas which were more orange. So I like to use those two colours to get in those two different sort of tones in the skin. And as you can see I left the highlighted areas quite free of colour so that they naturally look brighter than the other areas. So now let's move on to doing the hair. And the first thing that I'm doing is I'm actually adding some skin colours. And you might be wondering if I'm doing hair why am I adding lots of skin tones and that is because with the baby's hair a lot of it is quite sparse and you will actually see some of the skin underneath. So instead of drawing the hair and trying to work all of the skin in between the hair that you've done, it's easier just to add a base layer of the skin and then add the hair on top of it. And then once you've added all the hair strokes, you can see the skin naturally underneath it and it gives a much more realistic look. But I didn't add the skin tone everywhere, just on the areas where the hair starts to become quite sparse. I also added a layer of a more creamish tone because when we use the knife to pull up highlights you want to make sure you have quite a light base tone because it works by pulling up the wax and revealing lighter layers so you want to have your first layer as quite a light layer so that's going to be what peeks through when you use the knife to pull up all the details. 
but I'm going in with the colours sepia and black to create the look of hair and I've done so many videos and tutorials where I go through how to draw realistic hair so I will link them up above and I'll add a playlist of where you can look for more tutorials on how to draw eyes, how to draw nose, how to draw lips, how to draw hair because I've got tutorials for each of these different features as well if you want to check that out. So like I said the baby's hair can be quite sparse and as you can see now once I'm layering all of those little hairs over that skin you can see how it works and how much easier it would have been than trying to add the skin between all of the individual hairs. It would have just looked a mess and wouldn't have looked very sort of realistic especially if there's quite a lot of hairs it would just become very fuzzy and muddy looking so i'm adding in all of those base tones once i added the black and sepia i went in with the french gray just to kind of blend over it and smooth it all out and now i'm going to do the best part which is using that crafting knife to add all of the little individual details and so this is really good because it gets the really fine hairs and you can get a lot of detail with this and really make it look more realistic and bring the hair to life so all i do is i just scratch with that knife i'm not like digging it into the paper i'm just like scraping off the wax so you shouldn't rip your paper but I definitely recommend trying this out on scrap paper before you go in on your portrait because a lot of people that have tried this rip their paper probably because they're not necessarily doing it right so you will need to experiment with this and so you can see that it really nicely lifts up those layers to reveal some highlighted strands of hair and you can also add the detail in the skin so some hairs that are kind of flyaway hairs that go across the skin to make it look more realistic and add more detail to it again but that's basically how I do the hair like I said I've got more tutorials exactly focusing on drawing hair and making it look realistic and not just really sort of flat and wiry so now let's go on to the headband and I don't want to spend too much time on this because this isn't really something that's going to be in every baby's portrait but the way that I did this was I just used a few different pink tones so like a light pink and a white and I just looked again at the shadows and the highlights and I very much just looked at those individual shapes and the pattern throughout that sort of headband to get it looking realistic and then I went in with the flowers I used those same colours I only used a couple of colours for this and I just focused on the shadows, focused on the darkest areas of those flowers. I worked on each petal at a time rather than blocking in the whole sort of area. But you could get in a base layer for the whole thing and build it up. I just felt like working on it petal at a time. And so I added a light layer of the pink and I blended it with the white. The areas that were more highlighted and brighter, again I didn't apply as much coloured pencil to so that these would stay light and so I didn't have to work really hard to brighten them up. So when you're drawing flowers I really recommend just looking at it in terms of the shapes rather than trying to picture it as a flower because some of these shapes can look really sort of random. But if you look at it as individual shapes and just block them in, once you get them all in it will look a lot more realistic. So anyway, a few final things to say about Baby's Portrait, a few key sort of summarising things is firstly make sure that you're getting everything smooth, all of the transitions nice and smooth. The eyes are going to be a bit bigger, make sure that you do the white of the eyes with a bit of grey in and also make sure those eyelashes aren't too dark, don't do them just jet black from root to tip. Make sure you're doing the eyebrows not too thick make sure that they look a bit finer and a bit sparse and the eyebrow hairs are normally quite light and again with the lips the lips aren't going to have too much texture to them they're not going to have too much cracks there's going to be quite a lot of smoothness there but anyway guys that is it for this tutorial i really hope you found it useful and if you did make sure to subscribe and if you do want the real-time tutorials like i said they are available on my patreon where you'll hear more about my techniques and tips and tricks for how to draw this portrait as well as apply these techniques to all of the other portraits so i'll leave a link actually there's a card here that you can click but anyway guys thank you so much for watching check out these other videos if you want to see more colored pencil tutorials but i'll see you next time bye guys